Well, let's stay on the topic of Vince. Our next question sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Halvey in the state of Minnesota. Who? What? Halvey. Halvey. On a recent drive through Jim mentioned that Vince Jr. held a personal grudge against Crockett Jr. and Vern Gagne. Jim explained why Vince Jr. held the grudge against Crockett, but not Vern. What was the personal issue between Vince McMahon and Vern Gagne? Well, did, did I even say, did I use that terminology, he held a personal grudge? Or it just seemed like that that was the, the most delight he took? <laughs> I mean, we definitely talked about the idea that he did take personal, he did seem to take delight in crushing Crockett Jr. and Vern. Yes. Um, well, I just more enjoyment then. It was not necessarily a grudge, it's just a byproduct with him. I don't know that Vince had a lot of grudges, but... Uh, with Vern, it was just... It was a grudge. <laughs> it, well, <laughs> it was a grudge. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And and also, but he needed... He got the idea for Hogan. And then, because Hogan was working for Vern at the time and was his, you know, top box office attraction, not only did he fuck Vern, but also when Hogan wanted to bring all the people that he was comfortable working with, David Schultz as an opponent, Mean Gene Okerlund, blah, 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 they decimated Vern's roster. He would have probably have done that just to get what he wanted anyway. But then, you know, of course, there was uh, Vern was not a shrinking violet and um, said a lot of things. So I'm sure that, uh, you know, it wasn't a, like Vince didn't give a fuck about poor old Don Owens in Portland. He didn't care about putting Don Owens out of business. And as we've mentioned, he didn't try to put Jerry Jarrett out of business because, you know, because neither some one of, of them owned the Midwest. Yeah, none of those territories were a threat or a pl to him or a place that he wanted to, in you know, to take over or invade. So, you know, he left, but he he sodomized the the territories that he wanted to get a foothold in or get their talent. Well, the other thing is the story has always been that Vern and possibly even Greg kind of laughed off Vince in the summer of 83 when he offered to buy the AWA. Oh, I'd forgot about that. Yeah, that's well, and but everybody else would have too, because it, they were used to Vince, Vince Jr.'s the announcer for his dad. All of a sudden, hey, I want to buy your company you've been running for 30 years. What? Yeah, and a lot of people, even in the summer of 83, were still unaware that he had purchased the company from Vince Sr. and the other partners in Capital Wrestling. Everyone didn't know that he owned the company yet. Yeah. So, I, you know, it, it, that's the thing is, at first, Vince did remember, unkindly, people who didn't take him seriously. And maybe Vern was right, because if you look at who Vince made that offer to, notwithstanding Fritz, who didn't go for it, and, you know, Vince couldn't do anything to hurt Fritz, that Fritz and his booking and, and his family issues didn't hurt that territory enough on its own. Yeah. But Vince, the partners in Capital Wrestling got paid, although when you look at the value of what that company was worth, they really, he got a sweetheart deal with them. Tunney got paid and got set up for life or for the next 20 years. Stu got screwed. Mike LaBelle got screwed. Who's to say Vince doesn't go and offer Vern, who had the biggest territory of all those guys and had top level talent? Hey, I'm going to give you. X amount of millions of dollars, and then he reneges on it after six months, after he gets yeah. everything he wants, including the TV and the wrestlers. Because that's what he did. He went there and he went after his TV, and he went after his top talent. He went after the producers. He went after the C-level commentators. <laughs> he went after everyone. If you wanted a WWE deal, all you had to do is go work for the AWA. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no extra insight. Okay, I got no you. No extra insight. Well, I would... <laughs> We've been down that road and back a few times. I know all the fucking uh, uh, pictures on the wall of the bathroom at that gas station. 